So, and for them, like, uh, they, they are still stuck in this paradigm where private technologies equal security. And, and they think they build stronger, stronger system by building private tech ecosystem. Why we all know that's not the case. But how to explain that to them? And, uh, and what I want to do, the second part of this presentation is to maybe try to relate to more uh, universal concepts so that you don't need, we don't need to, to start from tech or from our expertise to talk to them. So uh, I was trying, when, when writing this, uh, this keynote, I was trying to uh, think to, 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 um, to take to add some uh, keywords like they will be, they will feel uh, involved in. And when you talk about removing everything and gaining uh, power and market advantage, that they understand. And the other word super important in this uh, this uh, keynote is cross-breeding because platforms, in a way, and, and the, the the title of this year API Day is uh, uh, economy uh, ecosystem as well. Uh, to platform, uh, from platform to ecosystem. This is, this is the, the quintessential um, power of platform. is to cross-bring everything, meaning talents, uh, but also assets, um, sometimes geographies. That's the power of a platform. Who knows Nassim Taleb? Nassim Taleb? Well, he is a guy, your big guy, will know about. Like, uh, he's like, he's a, a startup guru now. He, he, he wasn't, at first, because he was a trader. But you might, um, he, I can defy you that all the big guy at the top of the large organization as well, they read about him. And what does he say? He says, he talks about platform, but he doesn't know really he's talking about that. Um, so, Nassim Taleb is saying that the, re the reasons for the shocks and stay the same, the anti-fragile anti gets better. This property is behind everything that has changed with time. And when we talk about anti-fragile, and you talk about ecosystem, you talk about platform. Because anti-fragile is a network. And uh, well, it's very funny because it's trader and anti-fragile is a, a, a trading concept at first. And he's taking the, the myth of the Hydra. You know what is the Hydra? You know this big beast with three heads, and you cut one, and there was another one popping out. Uh, popping out. Well, it's the exact uh, idea of anti-fragile. You can cut one head, but something will grow faster. And this is a platform. This is an ecosystem, and this is anti-fragile. So it's better than a vegetarian because it's less fragile. It's like anti-fragile is less fragile. And this, and why is it super important in today's world? Is because this is the only way to manage uncertainty. And uncertainty is the common economy today. No one knows what will happen in maybe next year. Like, because everything is going so fast. Uh, we know that there will be a crisis. You, you don't know who will be your next competitor because everything is so fast. So at being a leader, your only way to be a good leader, in a way, is to manage uncertainty. And to manage uncertainty, you need to build this kind of infrastructure. Because yes, as far as we know, uh, platforms are the most useful way to build that, to centralize some know-how and to decentralize innovation. It's the only way we figure out to do that. And that's the way that's the way so many big tech companies are eating them all. And when you think about the a platform, it's an hybridization of everything, the cross building of everything. It's many business models because you need to be really modular like to, to adapt to in an agile world. It's hybrid team as well, product team. Not everywhere, unfortunately, but more and more uh, with uh, with different talents. And uh, an example is Alphabet. You have like many people talking about Alphabet, 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 uh, 
say like, well, maybe because of tax, it's super budget. But one of the main reasons they decided to reorganize the company this way was to keep their product culture and their modularity, uh, which, is, which is their biggest strength to keep the market and keep being the leader. So they just break down the, the big Google thing to make some more stable, like this spot like and some more destructive, far from, far from them, their business, not jeopardizing in any way the core of their, of their, of their, of their business. So this is a, 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 um, another philosopher, uh, thinker, uh, you can read and you can talk to maybe to some of the, your business leaders, Edgar Morin, I really uh, highly recommend him because he's uh, really easy to read and he talks about education, many, many stuff, but he talks a lot about complexity and uncertainty. And it's really amazing when you read his book, you could actually apply it to a API book and, or platform book, even if he doesn't know about his, uh, his tech himself. So you are leaders, you are IT leaders, you are platform leaders, so how do you make headways and how do you convince other leaders, more business leaders, to believe in what you believe, to believe and to pursue your vision and to think platform, to think API product. So what the question Isabelle Risa asked me before during this presentation was, well, you are working with a lot of organizations, more and more, more scale-ups as well, who are struggling with uh, this kind of, uh, of work. Uh, what, the, what is an API strategy? What does it make it successful? Well, don't start with an API strategy. You don't need that because otherwise it will like pull into debate. They will think tech. You will all think tech. Why? You don't need to think tech at first. What you need to think is a vision, a business vision, and then a digital strategy because. There is not only APIs available. You don't need APIs for everything. And it's bad. It's, most of the time when you think this way, it, it, it turns very bad. And you need first customer experience because APIs are, are here to build wonderful customer experience. Being the customer being the developer or being the ending customer. Try to speak leader to leader. Yes, he wants or she wants get anything you, you will tell her or tell him. But you need to master the art of translation in a way, to think what she what, or what he has in mind. And maybe he's scared, maybe he's busy, maybe he doesn't get it, but he doesn't want to say it most of the time. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a thing. So it's a, most of my time I try to do this connection and do this translation be, be, between the big CIO and the big CEO or C, C whatever O, um, asking the right, the right case question and speaking the right language. For example, um, as a CEO, what I advise to them is Question: How do they? How can they create an innovation and product culture? Like I don't really talk about tech, and then uh, the journey going, they get more uh, aware of that, and it's, it's, it's a great question. And that are questions I I copy pasted from ThoughtWorks. I know many CIO read this uh, this um, medium, uh, this media, and it, it was. Interesting, I, I read those questions, they were like highly recommended to CIO and I tried to replicate what I was asking to the CEO I'm mostly engaging with. So it's a parallel. And the question I would add to the CIO, as a CIO, what do you need, or a CTO, what do you need to ask yourself and what do you need to, to try to do is who are the business sponsors you will need to embark with you, to onboard with you. because. Uh, whatever that's maybe sometimes hard, but you will need to be end to end with your business partner as well. So you need to find it or her. Then, well, I know you know everything about that, but uh, that's true. Uh, 
you, we need to build stronger product organization and stronger, stronger product culture before you were entering the, the, the room guys we were having a discussion about product owners versus product management still even in startups there is a, a, a culture to build around this topic it's getting better it's getting much better but uh, yes there is tech and strategy and uh, my best advice to start building this kind of culture uh, is, uh, to, to, is to start somewhere small and safe because you don't need to, to, to do the big thing at very first. You might focus on something super tiny at first. And then the last thing, especially for friends, I would say, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm doing this French bashing, usual French bashing, French people love to do. Uh, but yes, uh, well, people won't come if you don't go to them. So you need to market your whatever you do, if, even, even if it's bad, it's good, uh, even, even more if it's good, but you need to market it. And, and yes, there is a shortage, shortage of these people because uh, they might be tech, but they might not be tech. And uh, they, they are not cool as they can understand that and you will need them to really bring your community of developers, business people who talk tech as well around you. And, um, and this, this is some, somewhere so sometimes like confused with uh, communication and marketing and communication is totally different. Thank you guys. with uh, don't start with an API strategy and you have uh, three roles. Uh, is this the same as uh, MVP, minimum order viable product? And the second question, uh, what I feel is the biggest problem is the culture and communication between product and tech and uh, there's a culture gap and uh, how can you reduce that gap? Because sometimes we don't talk the same language as you said, but um, sometimes we don't understand each other even if we try to speak the same language. Thank you for this question. Uh, so the first one, uh, yes, sure, it's an MVP. It's uh, trying to build an MVP strategy, but I didn't want to use some other jargon, so that's the reason why, but yes, MVP. And the second, well, you have to acknowledge that there is always, even though um, a small company, it's um, an ecosystem of humans <laughs> with some interests uh, who might, less or not, um, align with the greater good. Uh, but uh, yes, I mean, the, the way we do that, it's a lot of coffee with a person to show the person that there is a win-win situation, that you hear her or him, that it's not maybe easy for her or him to, to, to pursue his, uh, his or her objectives. Uh, but yeah, it's always kind of uh, messy and not really easy because it's only human material, and uh, you can't get you can't get it like zero or one. It's not right or black. I, it's really basic stuff I'm telling you, but and um, you you need to uh, to accept that and make it make it's a part of the problem. So yeah. And um, but my. Uh, some of the advice would be like spending time with them, like doing uh, 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 shadowing. Yeah. More questions? Not really. <laughs> so it sounds like um, a Google recruitment question, but how would you explain uh, the concept of API to uh, a CEO that, that has heard about API, that wants to do it because it's fashion, uh, but that doesn't really get it? <laughs> So how would you explain it to them? That's a good question. Uh, because I, I, have a lot, uh, I do it a lot, like explaining to XCOM people who, are, who have some mini consistent from everywhere and many IT team and really they don't get it, but they are too shy to say it. Um, well, I go back to basic stuff. 
Um, once the time the image on the museum is this one. Because no one told, they don't told them a lot about developers. They, they don't know about developers at all. For them, it's uh, like, uh, it's really sad to say that, but some kind of number. Um, and, uh, and, but they don't, they are so far away from this structure. Uh, and they have uh, uh, learned how to despise it sometimes because they don't master it, so it's scary for them. They don't get it, so it's scary for them. So they want to, to keep it away from them. So I use two metaphors. First one, the, the menu. So when you go to a restaurant, you have a menu. And on the menu, you have some starters, you have some main, and you have some dessert. And for each of the items, you have a price. This is an idea. You will ask for something, pay for it, and get it. This is really the basic of an API. So it's really simplistic, but this that this way they start to understand it. And then I'm because it's too much too too much like two sided. I'm trying to explain them like the bigger picture of uh, ecosystem, which is the underlying infrastructure of platforms, which means that they will have some core their business and they will have to open it. But they will have also to consume. You are saying that you will need to consume a lot of APIs to grow faster because this way you, do, you don't need to reinvent the world. So it's explaining them this way you go faster and you, 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 you scale better your business. So it's explaining to them that they will need to, they, have, they do have some know-how some know and some assets and APIs are, are a way to make more revenue out of it because they, they can like distribute those assets and it's a way to plug, to use other assets as, as well to go faster. Thank you, Paulina. Uh, and yes, you have a question? Yeah, a question related to what you just asked because, okay, here I understand the, the API concept of CEO, but um, we have a, in our company, for example, we have a CEO that wants API everywhere, but he doesn't know that uh, what are the implications behind, and he doesn't understand that he has to change also his organization and so on. How could you make him understand that there is a need behind, okay, if he wants to have APIs everywhere, he needs also to adapt his company and the structure of the, of the project uh, group and so on to be able to have a cross, uh, cross knowledge and so on. Yeah, it's a very odd part and it's a big piece of the cake. Um, so um, it's time, but uh, first to start with basic concept, concepts and not like too, too techy. Uh, like, uh, like the menu sometimes instead of to give him the bigger picture of why do you use APIs? You can start with Amazon because you will understand that he's a user of this, so you will understand why you need that to build customer good customer experience. And uh, sometimes what they what they struggle with is to understand that it's not an API. There, it's sometimes they think an API is the same everywhere. Like you, uh, you copy paste an API, and it's pretty easy. They don't understand you. Have, you have to design an API based on the need. The, the, the business and developer needs. And that's something you need to, 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 to insist on, on it, to, to, to explain him or her a lot how it works. And then you can uh, show them examples. Um, I use Stripe most of the time because it's so nice, so sexy, even if you are a business person. So even me, I can, like, I can use Stripe because they do it so easily. So they, then they start getting it. And, but you have also to try to do your homework and bring uh, figures from the market. For example, uh, I worked for a big group, uh, Natixis, uh, Natixis Payment. So they didn't know about Stripe. Which, and the valuation of Stripe is bigger than Natixis, actually, Natixis Payment, at least. But they didn't, didn't even know about that. So it's trying to find other players who are leading the way, and they don't know about it. Thank you, Pauline. Uh, so uh, now we're going to go to the next presentation. But if, if you want to ask more questions to Pauline, she will be hanging out here all day like you. So don't hesitate to come up to her uh, and, to, um, and to ask her more questions. <laughs>